Welcome back, it's me, Lou, and today we're going to do something a little bit different. We are going to be looking at some tabletop gaming terrain. And specifically, we're looking at some Battlefield in a box. Um, we have two different kits here. We have the Galactic Warzone objectives on our left, and on our right, we have our Galactic Warzone's bunker. Now, I know what you're thinking. These are Star Wars. Yes, they are. Um, so these are representation, uh, representational of Star Wars stuff, but they're not licensed, so they can't officially call it Star Wars. So it's more so Star Wars inspired. And uh, as I mentioned before, these are for tabletop gaming. And the nice thing with these pieces is that they're fully painted. Um, you don't have to assemble these models. It's already done. Um, they're already painted. Uh, they're, they're produced by Gal Force 9. And if you're into tabletop gaming, they're a wonderful addition to your tabletop. Especially if you need some terrain, um, if you need some objective markers, if you need like, you know, bunkers or obstacles or just, you know, whatever. Uh, the cool thing is Battlefield in a Box, they make pretty much any kind of terrain you could think of. If you need something for like, you know, World War One or World War Two setting, they have you covered. If you need something for like your fantasy gaming, um, for your tabletop RPGs, you know, they have that covered. And if you need something for science fiction, you know, you clearly have these Star Wars inspired pieces. So first off, let's take a look at the Battlefield in the Box, um, the Galactic War Zones. So as I stated earlier, these are produced by Gale Force 9, or Gale Force 9. Um, now, in terms of the size of these pieces, it's recommended that you use these with um, either 25mm to 35mm scaled miniatures. On the side of the box, you have some photography of the different uh, pieces. And on the back, um, Battlefield in the Box. Scenery plays a vital part in any miniature war game, whether you're playing historical, science fiction, or fantasy battles. The Battlefield in the Box range of tabletop ready scenery is a quick and easy way to create wargaming tables straight out of the box. Suitable for any scale miniature troops to fight over. And these models specifically are sculpted by Lizzie Willick. Okay, so the cool thing with this is that if you're into tabletop gaming, um, alright, so chances are you're probably playing on some sort of like battle map or battle mat. And it's nice that you could, if we're like, for further deeper immersion, it's nice to actually use physical models as opposed to just like, um, you know, cardboard tokens or flat cardboard tokens. Especially if you're playing with like miniatures. It adds a whole new dimension to the game when you're playing with, uh, you know, little figures and then you have actual like real scenery they can interact with. And in this case, um, as I've mentioned, these are the Star Wars inspired pieces. For like if you're playing some sort of tabletop gaming that's set in like the far future or it's science fiction based. Uh, this set specifically contains objective markers. Uh, so you have one hollow projector on our left. You have one command center and you have one security council. Um, so if you look at them. So this is the one on the right. The projector or the, I believe that's the, the command center. So if you look at the command center, this is very reminiscent of Return of the Jedi um, when they're on uh, the Mon Calamari cruiser Home 1 and Mon Mothma is giving the instructions for destroying a Death Star. So this is kind of like very representational of that. The Security Council is something you see like, um, you know, on the bridge of the Star Destroyers or like in the Death Star. Um, you always see like either like Imperial officers at them or some sort of like security d uh, detail. And over here, you have the hollow projector. Um, you know, if it's for, like, you know, whether Emperor Palpatine is giving orders to, like, um, the clone commanders, whatever. And let's take a look at these. All right, so I'll take this one out. Uh, let's get the shrink wrap off. All 
Okay, so it comes in this foam insert and uh, all right, so first impressions while it's still in the in its foam packaging. Really cool. Um, really surprised at the level of detail. There's some nice weight on these also. I don't know what the material is. Um, I'm not sure if it's resin or it might be polystone, I think. Um, but this is cool. So we have the command center. We have the... Uh, Um, security council, really nice. And then we have the hollow projector. Okay, let's review these. Um, let's start with the smallest first. So we have the hollow projector here. Nice, clean, even sculpt. I don't know how, the, so I don't know what the manufacturing process that's involved in making these. It's nice that they're already fully painted. Uh, the painting is clean also. There's some, there's some nice edge highlighting here to really bring out the detail. Um, the little control panel is colored in. And it's like I said, there's a nice weight to these. So if you put this on your game mat, you're not going to necessarily slide around unless you know someone really just forcefully bumps into the table. But I think for the most part, these are nice and weighty. Uh, the security council is awesome. I'm not sure how durable these are. So... Uh, I'm guessing if you dropped something like this, it would just break in half. So, you know, word of caution, uh, treat these as they're, I mean, even though they're, they're kind of a hard material, just treat these as if they're fragile pieces. And, you know, if you want to store them, I would suggest storing them in the actual foam as opposed to like, you know, putting them in like, uh, maybe like a box of terrain that you might have. Or, you know, if, you, if you're just playing at home and you do have a shelf where you could keep your terrain, you'll just keep it on your shelf. Security console is nice. Once again, some nice edge highlighting to really bring out the separate panels. Um, various uh, control pads. And it's a, it's a very clean sculpt. Uh, I like the fact that it's this harder material. material. Um, like I've gotten some um, pre-made manufactured uh, scattered terrain. And sometimes it'll be made of that softer plastic. That's almost like rubbery and sometimes that stuff will warp. This is very hard, dense. Uh, if it's polystone, which I think it might be, um, it's not going to warp, but it is going to be fragile, so just be careful. Uh, like I said, it's nice that it's nice and weighty. And here we have the the uh, command, I don't know, command center or command council. So something like this is cool. Like if you if you're playing like a Star Wars campaign or a you know Star Wars themed role playing game and you want to have Mon Mothma dictating orders or explaining the battle plan about the Death Star. This is the thing everyone's going to congregate at. I like this piece a lot. Um, there's some foam in here. Uh, I love the fact that it's edge highlighted because something like this has so many different layers and ridges to it. Uh, the details, it's, man, it's really, really impressive. Uh, for the control pa uh, panels, each console, there's like individual buttons sculpted. You know, it would have been so easy for them to cheat and just paint them in, but to actually feel to actually feel the relief of the um, buttons is awesome. I kind of wish they would just provide maybe some sort of weird holographic uh, Death Star or generic, you know, globe kind of structure they could place over this. I think that would be like awesome. Otherwise, it's cool. These are fun objective markers. Now, in terms of scale, I have some Star Wars miniatures that we could look at. Now these Star Wars miniatures, they're not um, from they're not from Legion or any of the more recent games. Uh, these are actually the really old um, Star Wars miniatures that were produced by Wizards of the Coast many years ago. And I want to say that these might be uh, 25 millimeter, I think. So we have a stormtrooper, and let's have a. Um, Let's have a mod calamari guy. So here's the the control council or the command uh, center, and then here we have a mod calamari officer. And if you can see, the scale's decent. Um, I'm not sure if so. These are the older miniatures produced by Wizards of the Coast, and I think they're much sm they're a little bit smaller than the new Legion stuff, I believe. 
but it still works. I think if you're playing with the more rec the more modern Star Wars miniatures, it'd be more of a perfect fit. But you get the point. It's pretty cool. And then here's the scale with um, the old Wizards of the Coast Stormtrooper. Yeah, so the older figures might be a tad or like a hair shorter than you know you'd you'd like, but I think for the more modern figures, um, they'd work perfectly. All right, let's put this one away. Uh, so if I had to rate this set specifically numerically, um, my first thought an easy ten. Uh, they're perfect. I I don't see anything wrong with them. Uh, they do what they're supposed to do. They're they're great objective markers. If you're playing a game and you know, for example, let's say that you're playing an RPG and your mission objective is to steal like um, you know Death Star plans. You know, you can easily use the you know the Security Council as an objective marker for your like your rebel troops to like infiltrate the base and obtain the information from. Likewise, if you're just into making like dioramas, they're ex they're excellent diorama pieces. And let's set this aside for now. Um, and let's move on to this one. The Galactic War Zones Bunker. So, uh, this is very inspired by the bunker that you see in Return of the Jedi during the battle for Endor. Um, if you remember, you know, Han's leading the Endor troopers and they have to destroy that, I don't know, that shield generator or whatever it is. So they have to infiltrate the bunker and throw all the thermal detonators inside. So here, the contents are one bunker base and one roof. So uh, I'm guessing that this has an interior. So we'll take a look and see how detailed it is. Okay, just like the objectives, this one comes in a foam box, and there's a cover. Alright, so here's the roof to the bunker, and here's the bunker itself. Nice weight on this, just like the objective markers. And as I stated earlier, I believe that, you know, if you're not playing... If you're not playing the game, and you want to put this thing in storage... Um, I'd recommend either keeping it in the box. Don't throw out these foam trays. Uh, they're excellent ways to protect. You know, this is an investment. You don't want to get this wrecked. So, save the trays. And, um, you know, or if you have a display shelf where you keep all your scattered terrain and your structures, just keep it there. There's a little bit of foam here from the, the pieces, so just ignore that. Uh, this is nice and hefty. There's some good weight to this. I like this a lot. Um, it's really solid structure. Unfortunately, it's just the walls of the, the bunker. There's no interior. Uh, what I might do in uh, the future is I might actually just create a custom interior myself. I'll probably piece, take a piece of like maybe like balsa wood or foam core or something and just make a floor and detail it with tiles and you know just make a custom floor. But otherwise, this is pretty good. If you're playing on a gridded battle map, um, you know, there's no need for a floor to begin with. You know, just place this on your battle map over the grid accordingly. So, you know, it, it, the grid lines up on the inside. Speaking of the inside, there are some details, um, which is nice. I'm glad they didn't neglect detailing the interior. So on the sides of the walls, you can still see the beams, you know, so that's a nice detail. It, it keeps the, the walls from just being bare and flat. Uh, the doors, it's nice to see that the interior of the doors is sculpted out with detail. And likewise, there's a control panel here. And on the back, you'll also notice there's more controls. Awesome. The sculpting and detail is nice and crisp. No soft sculpting here. So all these kind of like uh, vented patterns along the walls look really nice. It's clean and even. Uh, more details here. So if you want to recreate the scene where... 
R2-D2, Han Solo, and Princess Leia are trying to infiltrate the bunker, and R2's trying to, like, interface with the council. You know, you have all the doodads and buttons here. Uh, the roof is a nice, solid piece also. As you can see, there's tiny, small tabs, so it'll lock in place, and it won't shuffle and move around uh, once it's on. Well, it actually kind of does just a little bit. Oh, I take it back. So the roof will only go on one way correctly. If you look, um, the broader area here is actually the front, and the narrow arrow area here is the back. So you want to make sure this lines up towards the front, and then it kind of the tabs will kind of hold it in place, so it doesn't shuffle around. And then you have the completed bunker. So let's just see how this thing looks if you're to actually use it on a tabletop. Okay, so what I have here, um, this is produced by Monster. It's Monster Adventure Terrain. It's their um, modular tile system. And this is the, the color scheme of this one's foliage. And let's put the bunker on top and see how it looks. Yeah, there you go. It looks it looks really nice. Let's get some uh, of those Wizards of the Coast figures on here, or yeah, Wizards of the Coast, not Wiz Kids. And as you can see, it looks awesome. Um, yeah, so if you're into Star Wars tabletop gaming and you need some terrain um, to really like bring the world to life, this is the way to go. Um, I don't think there's any other way to to go about it. This is a um, this is a must get. Um, see, I really want to. So yeah, this is awesome. I love this thing. Let's bring this up just a little bit more and frame it like that. Awesome, wonderful, wonderful addition to like any tabletop. So how would I rate uh, these sets specifically? Um, just like the objective marker, I think I'd give this one, to be fair, um, I, I almost wanted to say an eight because they don't give you a floor, but I think it's actually smarter that they don't give you a floor because if you look, you know, if you're playing on a, on a battle map that's already pre-gridded, you know, you'll have whatever desired grid pattern you want on the inside. So I think it's, you know, for maybe for the, it's probably better they didn't give it to you. But you know, if you're placing this on a grassy battle map, you're gonna be, it's gonna look weird with this inside. So I don't know, I'm kind of conflicted a little. But either way, this is a quality build. It's nice, it's sturdy. Exercise some caution, treat it with care, and it'll last you a long time. Uh, so let's wrap this up. Um, if you're into tabletop gaming and you need something for your science fiction settings, whether you're playing Star Wars, Warhammer, Necromunda, or whatever, um, these are definitely worth looking at. They're they're priced, they're affordable. Um, you know, you can find them at your friendly local gaming store. Uh, I purchased mine through Amazon, and I believe the prices I paid were very reasonable. I don't think it was that much money. It's nice that it's pre-painted and pre-assembled. Uh, so you don't have to like you know waste time if you you know if you want to just jump right in you could just jump right in and start playing as is. I've seen some um, other companies produce bunkers like this. I believe there's a company called Foreground, and they make a uh, pre-assembled, pre-painted bunker. But I believe their materials may be made of wood, whereas this is, might be like a resin or polystone. Um, I like this. I like the feel of this. It's nice and heavy. It's not going anywhere. This is beautiful. So yeah, um, my name is Lou. Uh, thank you so much for checking this out. Um, if you're into tabletop gaming um, and you think something like this would look great on your tabletop and your Friday night game sessions, you know, just leave a comment down below. Uh, for me, I think this is beautiful. Um, I'm kind of dabbling in the world of tabletop gaming just a little bit. I'm more so into, into collecting the miniatures right now and, and painting them. 
And the reason why I buy stuff like the, the terrains and the buildings and scattered terrains because I like the idea of creating dioramas. And at the same time, I am trying to learn the rules just so I can familiarize myself with what you know what's going on. I don't want to be a complete like noob to everything. So uh, I'm glad that you got the chance to check out this video. Um, feel free to drop by anytime, and I'll talk to you later. Take care.